Welcome back. Our next video is going to deal with audit risk. We may consider that audit risk is basically the most important chapter that we have to deal with in F8 because it lies at the heart of the audit engagement. Why? Simply because according to IS2, ISA 200, the overall objectives of the auditor to conduct an audit is to obtain reasonable assurance. Um, the auditor shall obtain sufficient and appropriate evidence to reduce the audit risk to an acceptably low level. I.e. why he should do that because basically his risk and his objective is, first of all, his objective is to express an opinion on the financial statements of the client that these financial statements are free of material misstatements. Now the risk here is that he is going to express an inappropriate opinion. And why he could do that because there are some elements in the financial statements that could lead to material misstatements and that might be not identified by the auditor. Let's see uh, what's in our notes. Um, basically, any kind of modern audit that is conducted according to the ISAs will be conducted on a risk based risk basis. So the author will assess the risks that will influence his opinion and will uh, design audit procedures in order to minimize that risk to an acceptably low level. Note that in your questions in the exam, you might be required to give some theoretical knowledge back to the examiner. So for example, list risks in the scenario, or you might need to um, explain those risks. So this this is where you will not get sufficient marks just for listing those risks. Um, the audit risk has uh, basically three components. Two of them can be influenced by the auditor. One can, uh, sorry, two of them cannot be influenced by the auditor. One of them can be. So as I told you, audit risk is this uh, overall risk that an auditor gives an inappropriate opinion in his report. So he, he will be wrong in the end of his audit work. If an auditor, for example, as our notes say, gives an unqualified opinion when the company in fact was, is not a going concern, then the shareholders and other eventual potential shareholders will place reliance on the report, will have, um, let's say, uh, will trust the report and the, order and the financial statements of the company, whereas it was not a going concern, so the company and its shareholders eventually might suffer a financial loss and can sue the auditor for professional negligence for issuing a wrong audit opinion. There's the risk of the auditor. If you want to talk about audit risk in terms of general business environment, this would be the business risk of the auditor, that he expresses a wrong opinion. That's his audit risk. Just don't confuse this concept with the business risk of the client. We'll discuss this a little bit later on. Audit risk has three components. It's uh, inherent risks, control risk, and detection risk. The auditor has to assess, must assess inherent risk and control risk, these two elements, but he's not able to influence them as these two will come with the client company. They are embedded, they are coming with the system and the business of the company is dealing in. The only element that the auditor can actually influence is detection risk. And what the auditor has to do in, in an audit engagement is to reduce the audit risk to an acceptable low level so that he can express or he can obtain a reasonable assurance and he can express his opinion about the financial statements. So what is inherent risk? Inherent risk is the risk that there may be material errors and misstatements in the financial statements before we take into consideration any internal controls. So this is something that comes with the business of the client and something that we cannot influence. It is due to the environment, the economic environment or the industry that the company is dealing in. For example, as per our notes, high tech companies face such risk because their inventory becomes very quickly obsolete because it's a very dynamic industry in which people always have to uh, be very innovative to maintain the position on the market. So if we have old inventory, there's a high risk that these will be obsolete. This is a risk that it's carried by the industry and we have to give consideration to this risk before any kind of controls that would be implemented by the company, for example, by uh, controls for identifying uh, obsolete inventory. That would reduce the control risk, if there are such controls, obviously. 
So now you know what's the control risk. The control risk is that the client's internal control system fail to prevent any material errors and misstatements and these will basically end up in the financial statements. Again, this is a component that cannot be influenced by the auditor because it's due to the uh, environment of the client, the control environment. How strong and how effective is the control environment of the client? The auditor assesses this at the beginning of the engagement, has some expectations, and then during the audit uh, engagement, he tests whether his assessments were right or not. He will conduct some tests of control. If the test team uh, show that the system of control is not as effective as and efficient as it, it was expected to be, then basically audit risk goes up and there, sh there shall be more substantive procedures, i.e. more procedures that will lower the detection risk that can actually diminish the audit risk in, on a total level. So for example, if there is no effective segregation of duties in the company, there is a high risk that employee fraud can be committed and will go undetected in the financial statements. So as I said, detection risk, now you know, is the risk that the auditor's tests and inquiries fail to detect material errors and misstatements, and these will go through uh, to the financial statements and will be reflected in the end. This is the one that is in the responsibility of the auditor. This is due to the auditor's work. So if, for example, he identifies a high level of control risk, he has to uh, design more substantive procedures, more tasks that will detect material misstatements due to the inability of the control systems to detect such risks. For example, a new client is always riskier for an auditor because he doesn't have a knowledge and understanding of the client's environment and entity. Detection risk can be further broken down into two components. It's the sampling risk. Uh, that is due to the fact that actually the auditor is uh, verifying or is reviewing the financial statements on a sample basis. So. Um, this is due to the fact that the auditor either selects a too small or not a representative sample of the population, so he will reach an invalid conclusion. For example, for some reasons, he will, um, let's say, avoid uh, items from, from the, of the population that can be uh, prone to fraud, then that will be a sampling risk because the auditor does not, did not make a proper selection. The other component of the detection risk is the non-sampling risk. This is because the auditor arriving at the wrong conclusion for some other reasons than sampling, for example, management deliberately hiding or um, providing misleading information and explanation. As I told you, it is very important from the exam point of view to make a clear distinction between audit risk and business risk. Do not confuse them. Business risk is the risk that the company will fail and when I say the company, it is the client company that will fail to meet its strategic objectives and policies that were adopted are inappropriate. Business risk to large extent tied up uh, with the fundamental accounting assumption of going concern. So basically the company is not a going concern due to some reasons. And this is still the client. Business risk has also three main elements. That's operational, financial and compliance risk. For example, operational when there's a shortage of raw materials or when there's no market to sell our products to. Financial risk, foreign exchange losses when trading internationally or, uh, for example, um, contracting a lot of floating interest um, loans that exposes the company to a huge financial risk that can lead to going concern problems in the company. Or compliance risk if the co company, the client company, is not complying with, compliant with the relevant laws and legislations of the environment in which he is operating in. When you are dealing with exam questions, please note carefully the question requirement and watch out what kind of risk you have to deal with, either the business risk of the company or the audit risk. Basically, they are re uh, relying in the same uh, let's say source, but they have different uh, consequences. In terms of, from the auditor's point of view, a business risk that appeared may lead to going concern problem, which then eventually will be an audit risk problem that he will express, the auditor will express an inappropriate opinion if there are business risk problems. Yeah, for example, with the foreign exchange, uh, trading in foreign exchange currencies, foreign currency, sorry, the business risk is that um, foreign exchange losses will reduce the company's profitability, yeah, because there might be such situations, but why is the audit risk, it would be that we, okay, we, the client might overstate profit if foreign exchange losses are not properly recognized. 
right? So this is the main difference between the business risk. As I said, the source of the risk is the same. It's just the company dealing with foreign currencies, but the business risk is different from the audit risk. It's just the same aspect looked from different point of views, either from the auditors or from the client. Well, while as almost all business risks can be translated into audit risks, so the auditor has to examine any kinds of business risks he uh, occurs during the uh, engagement. Okay, this should be our short session about audit risk. In our next session, we're going to deal with internal controls.